when you um, record absorbances from the colorimeter, you will record them in your data table. <clears throat> For the blank, there is no absorbance. And the question is, why do you have to blank? Why do you have to create that blank? And the answer would be so that um, the absorbance would just be read off of what is the actual reaction. So your thiocyanate uh, molecules are, or ions are binding to the iron 3 plus uh, ions. And so there will be other iron 3 plus ions that are in the background. And you want to make sure that they're not contributing to the absorbance. So we have a blank, so there's no absorbance there. That's going to be zero. Um, and then we do our first test tube. And we have one milliliter of the iron nitrate that has been acidified, one milliliter of the potassium thiocyanate, and eight milliliters of water. And for my first absorbance, I recorded a value of 0 0.245. Once you have the value for the absorbance, and you do each one in turn, then you're going to move on to your calculations table, which we're going to see right here. And I'm going to record the absorbance in the column with the A. So I have 0 0.245 there. And the first question I ask you to calculate is actually the concentration of the Fe3 plus uh, ions in molarity. So I'm going to kind of zoom in on this. Uh, let me stop it for a second. Uh, zooming in with that would jar a little bit. So we have to calculate the concentration of the iron 3 plus ions. And if you can see from that table above, in that sample for for tube number one, you have one milliliter of 0 0.01 molar iron 3 plus, and then you have another milliliter solution, and then eight milliliters of water. So that means that your 0 0.01 concentration has now been diluted. Uh, the, the question is, what has it been diluted to? This is an example of where you're going to use the M1V1. So I'm going to write number one here to indicate tube number one. M1V1 is equal to M2V2 because you perform a dilution. The initial concentration was 0 0.01 molarity, and that was in at 0 0.001 liters. That is equal to what is the new molarity? That's what we don't know. And we have the combination of um, 1 milliliter and 1 milliliter and 8 milliliters gives us 10 milliliters, which is equal to 0 0.010 liters. So our new concentration for the Fe3 plus is equal to 0 0.01 molarity times 0 0.001 liters all over 0 0.010 liters. And so when we finally run that calculation, we end up with 0 0.001, uh, probably zero there for sig figs, molarity, or 1.0 times 10 to the negative third molarity for the concentration of iron 3 plus. And actually with sig figs, 1.00 times 10 to the negative third molarity of iron 3 plus because each of our measurements <coughs> for the amount that we're supposed to be using is 3 sig figs. So now we can take that concentration of iron 3 plus and put it into number one here. So that's 1.00 times 10 to the negative third. I don't have to put the units on there because the units are at the top. Now I need to calculate the thiocyanate concentration. So I'm going to move the camera down a little bit. And we see that for the 
thiocyanate. Um, if you remember, we had 0 0.003 molarity in one milliliter. And actually, so our volume is going to be exactly the same. We have M1V1 equals M2V2. We had 0 0.003 molarity in 0 0.001 liters is equal to whatever that new concentration would be in 0 0.010 liters. So we're going to solve for the molarity of our thiocyanate. So we're going to have 0 0.003 molarity times 0 0.001 liter divided by 0 0.010 liter. And that is going to give us 3.00 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. And now I can write that up in my calculations table. And now I have my two ion concentrations. And from there, I should be able to run some calculations for what the iron thiocyanate sort of complex ion, what that concentration will be. OK, so now that we have the uh, absorbance, we can, from that, use Beer's law to calculate what the um, concentration of the iron thiocyanate would be. And absorbance is equal to uh, A, B, C. Ab the absorptivity, which is that little like sigma, the path length, which is represented by L, and C, which is supposed to represent concentration. The one we're trying to find is concentration. So to isolate for that, concentration is equal to the absorbance over absorptivity times path length. Path length. And you're given absorptivity times path length is equal to 5,900 sort of uh, oops, inverse molarity. So if my absorbance is 0 0.245 over 5,900 uh, the inverse molarity, of course, that's 1 over m. That will give us the correct units for concentration. That right there will give me the actual concentration of the iron thiocyanate, which in this case, uh, let's see if I can write something there, is uh, 4.15 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. Okay. You can see there's a lot of calculations here, so make sure you give yourself enough room. So I'm going to put that value into my table. 4.15 times 10 to the negative fifth. And uh, now that I have that value um, and my original initial two concentrations, I can calculate. I can calculate my equilibrium concentrations. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit to the ice table you would use to calculate the concentrations, the equilibrium concentrations of the iron and the thiocyanate. The video is getting a little bit long. So I set up my ice table, and the equilibrium concentration of iron thiocyanate turns out to be 4.15 times 10 to the negative fifth. And its initial concentration was zero before the reaction. So that meant there was some plus x, which in this case, uh, we can probably write down here x is equal to 4.15 times 10 to the negative fifth because it added that amount to that. So the initial concentration of the iron 3 plus from your table was 1.00 times 10 to the negative 3. The thiocyanate was 3.00 times 10 to the negative fourth. And so you're going to have a minus x, minus x. And if x is equal to 4.15, then it's going to be 1.00 times 10 to the negative third minus 4.15 
times 10 to the negative fifth, and that means that your equilibrium concentration would be 9.59 times 10 to the negative fourth for the concentration of Fe3 plus, and then for the thiocyanate, that is 3.00 times 10 to the negative fourth minus 4.15 times 10 to the negative fifth, because that is the change. Plug that into my calculator. And I get 2.59 times 10 to the negative fourth. So now I have my three equilibrium concentrations, and from there I should be able to calculate K. So I'm going to go back to my other paper and do this calculation. Obviously, lots of room for these calculations. So the K, let's see there, K is equal to the concentration of the product, which in this case is FeSCN2 plus. So that's the product over the reactants, Fe3 plus and SCN minus. Those values are for the F, for the iron thiocyanate is 4.15 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 9.59 times 10 to the negative fourth and also divided by 2.59 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that gives you a final. So that gives you a final K value of 167. So up here, I would write my values. The iron was 9.59 times 10 to the negative fourth. The thiocyanate was 2.59 times 10 to the negative fourth. And my K equilibrium was 167. And that would complete the calculations portion You've done all those calculations. You will have to repeat those calculations, but you will not have to write all of that down for every single one of the tubes. If you Because you'll be doing the same calculations. You only have to write it once, and then you can just fill in the table. Uh, those are all uh, what we'll call sample calculations, so that in your lab book, you don't have like three pages of just calculations. Sample calculations. And remember, you can use the left side for scratch work.